everybody, it's Lorraine from PregnancyExercise.co.nz going to you live here on Facebook. We'll be sure to YouTube and edited for TikTok. Thanks for joining today. Please as well, any questions, place them in the comments. And as always, we've got a great offer on our Birth Fit Mom program for you. Okay, what are we talking about today? We're going to kick off the first in this new series of lives with preparing your pelvic floor muscles for impact postpartum. Okay, now this can also be after any type of injury, any type of surgery, actually after any time off as well. So not just in that initial postpartum. And what high impact are we talking about? Well, we're talking about high intensity impact training, your HIT um, sessions, running, netball, hockey, um, CrossFit, F45. How and when can you prepare those pelvic floor muscles specifically post birth? All right, so I'm gonna give you some really good focus tips on the stepping plan today of what you can do and how you can focus. So when to start, knowing your pelvic floor muscles, the exercises that you have to do if you want to get back into impact, um, how to check your pelvic floor muscles, um, and yes, and then how best to continue and get to where you want to be with your exercise levels and fitness levels um, during that postnatal period. And that's regardless of when you start. All right, so let's have a look. We'll, uh, I'll talk a lot about running. Um, as an ex-triathlon elite coach, um, I used to coach running, obviously used to coach triathlons to a very, very high level. I used to do um, half Ironmans myself, actually, which a lot of you might not know. That's many, many years ago, um, pre-kids, and I was pretty good as well. Um, but I've always coached running, biomechanics, um, injury rehab um, for runners, and obviously the pelvic floor muscles come into that quite significantly. So when can you start and what should you do? in those initial stages postnatal. So we'll go over the whole six week weight myth in another post and we're also going to look at hypertonic pelvic floor muscles in the next live session because I don't want to go too much in detail into everything in today's session. We actually need to break it down. All right, so let's have a look at the type of birth you have. Did you have a C-section? Did you have a vaginal birth? Did you have a birth that needed instruments? Did you need an episiotomy? Did you need second, third, or fourth degree turts? These are priority things which we need to look at to know maybe possible damage to your pelvic floor muscles and if we need to contract them, if we need to focus on relaxing them, if we need to activate them with our pelvic floor and transverse so very very specific so i want to give you a, a quick guide all right straightforward forward, vaginal birth no turin grazing possible stitches okay you should be fine to start to see if you can contract those pelvic floor muscles when you get up in the shower almost immediately okay see how they feel okay remember we do that pick up a raisin on the exhale can you feel them contracting if you've had an instrument birth, so we're talking an assisted birth with um, forceps or um, von Tooth, and you may have required further um, stitches, possible secondary, not often with von Tooth, but you still need to be mindful. If the stitch is down there, let's think about, it's basically, and if you get up to third and fourth degree tears, internally, it's taken, it normally takes about 30 minutes for your LMC or obstetrician to stitch you up. They have to stitch through a lot of layers, a lot of scar tissue, lot of scar tissue, lot of fluid. So the brain can find it really, really hard to connect with those pelvic floor muscles. So wait seven to 10 days, okay? Let the stitches start to heal, let the blood flow reduce that cellular repair and then start to see if you can activate them. If you've had third and fourth degree tears, very, very similar. Wait until you can pretty much sit down and then see how they are. 
with a c-section you can also check as soon as you're up and about moving around do they feel all right do they feel normal okay so we're kind of getting to know how our pelvic floors are immediately postpartum let me know okay this is what you can put in the questions how they feel if you can connect with them if you can't contract them all right and then you need to start to look at okay a week or so down the track did you cough or sneeze did you leak all right do you have any deep pelvic pain all right so those are different things we can start to address all right so let's say everything's okay everything's hunky dory okay we know that it's around about the 12 week mark that the connective tissue in our entire system has started to come back to not i would not say pre-pregnancy levels but it started to come back and increased in strength from the reduced strength any time prior to that so we know that we shouldn't necessarily be adding impact and running until after 12 weeks so someone who's been used to running hit oh my god you're telling me i've got to wait three months away what you can do in that time is you start to get strong and prepare your body for that exercise and that becomes your focus so where do you go with your exercise from kind of week one, week two, um, if you want to get back into that? Well, first of all, core activation. Okay, we need our core muscles strong to be able to support our bodies when we're fully weight bearing. Okay, so that's in jumps, stepping, netball. We don't want to be doing this with the poor posture, etc. So we need to strengthen our core. We need to strengthen our glute muscles to help bring those pelvic floor mu muscles back up to where they were pre-birth. Remember, we don't want saggy pelvic floor muscles, okay? They're gonna leak a little bit, okay? And we don't want pelvic floor muscles that are too tight, which can also cause leaking and pelvic pain. We want those pelvic floor muscles to stop us leaking on impact. All right, so glutes, core, then comes the functional strength with your lunges and squats. Your must-do exercises to start off with, pelvic floor and core activations specific to your needs, all right? So that's what I'll talk about in the hypertonic ones. Do you need to be activating your pelvic floors or don't you, all right? Do we need to activate them together? All right, then let's start on those exercises. You have to do hip bridges. If you wanna get back into any impact, Hip bridges are one of the best exercises to do. Sports, so we're looking F45, netball, um, hockey, etc. Let me just tell you guys as well, this is a great story from one of my clients. Um, one of my mums, she hadn't seen me. Um, she would not been to any of my exercise sessions. She'd seen me in an antenatal class. Okay, she went back, she went back to netball. Six weeks, oh yeah, I'm leaking that much, sorry, and I put a pad on. Ah, okay, let's not, let's not do that. Okay, dialed it back. Two weeks, pelvic floor, core strengthening, glute strengthening, played netball last week, didn't leak. All right, that's how quick we can make those changes when you do those specific strengths. So, hip bridges, all right? One leg exercises. So if you're short of time, hip bridges, one leg controlled knee, bat, knee bends, okay? Those two exercises alone can start to help you prepare for impact training. Now, what we then want to look at is functional exercises, your squats, your lunges, and multi-directional exercises. And this is where a lot of people go wrong is because sports, we move to the side. Okay, we move to the side quickly. And, and we also, in running, you know, we need impact and we need to be able to stay strong because going onto one leg running down a hill is actually can starts to go into that transverse plane so you need to train it all right so we start to move with slight hops this can be pretty good just to start with okay so this is what i normally say to mums okay can you do me 10 one leg without doing this can we see that all right, that's where you want to go. 10. Yep, 10 of those on each leg. Controlling the pelvic floor. No leaking. OK, 
Can we skip? Split legs. Hard one. Okay, and can we do that? This is one of the most challenging moves for your pelvic floor muscles. It's the same, you know, if you go to run down um, a curb, step off the road, that taking out wide. So what can we do to train that? Okay, so what we do is we can do those jump moves out to the side, but I love to introduce nine, 10 week mark. Okay, your jump out planks. Start slow and then we start to build up. So you can do that with all your exercises. So I like to do pelvic floor, transverse, base exercises, functional exercises, very, very run specific and start to introduce that impact. Then at the 12 week mark, you've done six to eight weeks of strength and conditioning specifically for your running or um, hockey training, netball, etc. So now we can start to get out there and build up our exercise. So do we go straight into a three, 4K, 10 minute run? No, all right. So we have to, for some reason, postpartum, we can be told at six weeks, yeah, you're clear to go and exercise. We think because of all what we've gone through, we're like, yes, I'm gonna go and try and run for 30 minutes. Okay, but we've got to dial it back. When was the last time you maybe did a class at full level? When did you last play hockey? When did you last play netball? And you can start to think, oh, Lorraine, it was maybe seven, eight months ago. So if an athlete came to me and had not done any running for seven or eight months, I would not tell them to go out for a two, three K or five K run. I would break it down for them. And that's what you need to do when you're postpartum. Now, don't forget as well, our birth to fitmon program, which is a ridiculous value at the moment with the um, code postnatal 35, 35% discount, includes your full pelvic floor program, your um, full strength program for running, and then it also includes this, what I'm going to tell you now about how you increase your intervals to build up to a full game of netball, um, hockey, etc., and a 5K run. So how do we do it? Okay, we break it down. So what I say is, you know, the route that you used to run, you're going to set off at a walk. And then when you've warmed up, five, ten minutes into it, depending on the weather, start to run. All right, and run. You want to keep things, especially if you're breastfeeding, aerobic. Run until you feel tired and your technique start to go. As soon as that happens, stop and walk again. All right, see how you feel the next day. If you feel good, if your pelvic floor muscles felt fine, you had a restful sleep, the next time you go, you can do it again. And then week two, you do two of those intervals and we start to build gradually from there. So don't forget as well, when you start to run at that kind of 13, 14 week mark, most of us are fully breastfeeding, um, fully um, either bottle feeding, okay, still demanding, um, holding babies, sleep deprived, etc. That's a biggie, all right? I will, I will come to that as well. So please be mindful of all of that because again, an athlete who has no, no children um, will be programmed and see adaptions very, very quickly to that. Postpartum, we don't necessarily adapt as quickly as we'd like, um, but it's because of sleep deprivation, sick kids, um, consistency. All right, so just try and be flexible. Some weeks are gonna be good, some weeks are gonna be crap. Um, some weeks you might just not feel like you're getting anywhere. Um, but just take each week as it comes. One, one week you might be able to do four or five exercises, the week after two. You know, so we just have to balance balance things like that and um, not kind of suggest in this timeline that, okay, I'm going to be running 5Ks in six to seven weeks. It might be eight, 10, 12 weeks. It might be four months, but you're going to get there. You're definitely going to get there. Um, so keys for impact training. 
start to get aware of your pelvic floor muscles almost immediately post birth depending on the birth that you have then start with your basic ex core exercises basic exercises functional exercises preparing for impact exercise now depending how often you do you can do things that stretch can take anything from kind of 8 to 16 weeks and then you can start with whatever you want to in terms of that training and like i say our birth to fit mom program will help guide you through all of that all the specifics whether you want to get like i said crossfit um f45 the bft you know i want to make sure that you're not going to be leaking when you're doing jumps you know you, do, you don't want to be you know when you're raising for the ball when you're running across the hockey we want to try and get back um, to where we were um, also as well I would highly recommend if you can uh, around the six to eight week mark if that's your goal um, to get back into those types of sports quite quickly is to see your pelvic um, health specialist in your area because I can help guide you you can do all the exercise but I don't do internals I can't do that so I can't see and um, physically check um, to see how your pelvic floor muscles are healed. Also, for anybody who has um, turin, scar tissue massage, just like I suggest for C-section scar tissue massage, internal scar tissue massage is an absolute must. And mums, you know, we didn't discuss things like this, you know, five or 10 years ago, but it's making a massive difference in terms of recovery to all the clients that I'm seeing come through. And, you know, making those changes very, very quickly. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's brief little live, lots of information to take on. Um, I want you guys to be specific. This is why the Birth to Fit Mum program can work that way. It's not a one size fits all. You can choose your different paths, suiting whether which you know, pelvic floors, transverse, C-section, um, stitches, running, etc. Just working out at home. It has all those paths that you can choose from. Um, so that's why it's quite unique compared to a lot of other programs that are out there on the market. Join me for the next live because the next live I'm going to discuss the hypertonic pelvic floor muscles. So that's pelvic floor muscles that are quite perhaps too tight which can also lead to some dysfunction such as leaking um, and feeling like things are quite heavy and almost quite going on to prolapse. Um, and again, something that's easily fixed once we know about it. So please like everybody, share because things don't go around on Facebook that much anymore. Um, but the more likes I get, comments, etc., it will really help. And I'm going to load this video again onto the feed and onto our YouTube channel. So please share the website, pregnancyexercise.co.nz. Use the coupon code postnatal35 at the checkout. Any questions, comments, please put them down, no matter how specific I can answer you. Want mum share videos in the group, etc., of activation, um, glute strength, etc. Excellent, everybody. Thank you all for joining. Take care and I will see you soon. Bye, everybody.